What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Tuesday, April 19th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello, that's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the answer report, or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio, just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Doris Roberts, who played Ray Barone's prime mother on the sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond, has died. Roberts Raymond co-star Patricia Heaton tweeted on Monday. She was 90 years old. Heaton tweeted to my beloved Marie, rest in peace, along with the photo of the two and a message reading in part, truly the end of an era. Born in St. Louis, Missouri in 1925, Roberts began acting in 1952, appearing on the television series Studio One. Appearances on The Naked City, Ben Casey, and The Defenders followed. She first appeared on the big screen in 19. 1961's film Something Wild. Robert's other film credits include A Lovely Way to Die, No Way to Treat a Lady, and The Honeymoon Killers. On television, she also appeared on Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, Full House, and All in the Family. Roberts was probably best known to television audiences, however, as Marie Barone, the aggressively nosy, completely biased mother of Ray and Robert Barone on Everybody Loves Raymond, which ran from 1996 to 2005 and starred Ray Romano, Heaton, Brad Garrett, Peter Boyle, Madeline Sweeten, and Monica Horan. Roberts won five Emmy Awards in her lifetime, four for her performance on Raymond and a fifth for an appearance on St. Elsewhere. She also won a Screen Actors Guild Award for her work on Raymond. Roberts was married twice. She wed writer Michael Quintana, with whom she had a son in 1956. Her second marriage to writer William Goyen lasted from 1963 until his death of leukemia in 1983. In addition to her son, Michael Quintana Jr., Roberts is survived by three grandchildren. Ray Romano offered a heartfelt remembrance for his TV mom, Doris Roberts. In the statement provided by the rap, Romano, who played sports writer Ray Barone on the sitcom Everybody Loves Raymond, said that Roberts, quote, had an energy and a spirit that amazed me. Whether working professionally or with her many charities or just nurturing and mentoring a green young comic trying to make it as an actor, she did everything with such a grand love for life and people, and I will miss her dearly. Everybody Loves Raymond, which featured Roberts as an overbearing and completely biased mother, Maureen Barone, ran for nine seasons on CBS. Brad Garrett, who played the other less favored Barone son Robert on the show, also offered his remembrances. Garrett said in the statement, I'm deeply saddened by the passing of Doris Roberts, an amazing lady and brilliant actor. Doris was vibrant and full of life both on and off the stage, and I'm so grateful we had so many wonderful memories. I'll miss her greatly, and will always remember her incredible kindness, humor, talent, and heart. In her own statement Monday, Patricia Heaton, who played Maureen Barone's long-suffering daughter-in-law, Deborah, offered quote, truly the end of an era, calling Roberts my wonderful TV mother-in-law. He also noted that the actress was a consummate professional from whom I've learned so much. She was funny and tough and loved life, living it to the fullest. Amber Heard has escaped conviction for illegally smuggling her two Yorkshire Terriers into Australia. Heard arrived in an Australian court Monday accompanied by her husband, Johnny Depp, and pleaded guilty to making a false statement on her immigration card about the couple's Yorkshire Terriers pistol and boo, according to the BBC. An Australian judge then gave Heard a one-month good behavior bond that, if broken, will require the actress to pay a $770 fine. No conviction was placed on Heard. Australian authorities also posted on YouTube an apology video from the Hollywood stars who are seen discussing the importance of the country's biosecurity laws. Heard is saying in the clip, I'm truly sorry that Pistol and Boo were not declared. Protecting Australia is important. The incident occurred in July of 2015 when Heard visited Depp in Australia as he was filming the latest Pirates of the Caribbean movie. The actress originally faced a maximum of 10 years jail time and a fine of $75,000. The story gained headlines after Australians, Australia's agriculture minister Barnaby Joyce called out Depp and his wife and threatened to have the dogs euthanized if they were not sent back to the U.S. Heard said at the time, I have a feeling we're going to avoid the land down under from now on just as much as we can thanks to certain politicians there. I don't know. I guess everyone tries to go for their 15 minutes, including some government officials. Heard recently confirmed she will be appearing in Warner Brothers' upcoming superhero team-up film Justice League Part 1 as eventual Queen of Atlantis and Aquaman's love interest Mira. 
The Impossible Hummer J. Bayona has signed on to direct the Universal's upcoming sequel to Jurassic World. According to the Hollywood Reporter, Bayona was courted by the studio during his discussions with Paramount about directing World War Z 2. The director left that project in January, giving him the opportunity to take on the high-grossing dinosaur franchise. Original Jurassic World director Colin Trevorrow is still remaining on the sequel, writing the script alongside his frequent collaborator Derek Connolly. Trevorrow left the director's chair for Jurassic after signing on to direct Star Star Wars Episode 9. Tevro tweeted Monday in response to Bayona's hiring, proud to collaborate with one of my favorite filmmakers on the next Jurassic adventure. Jay Bayona, it's all yours. Bayona also tweeted on Twitter alongside the logo of Jurassic World. It's official, so decided to join the Jurassic team. Stars Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are expected to reprise their roles for the sequel as Owen Grady and Claire Deering. Jurassic World 2, 2 is due in theaters June 22, 2018. Bayona is currently working on another film a Monster Calls, starring Neil Liam Neeson and Felicity Jones, arriving in theaters October 14th. Nicholas Holt and Kristen Stewart are lovers on the run in the first trailer for A24's upcoming sci-fi thriller, Equals. Released Monday ahead of the film's U.S. premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, the clip features Holt and Stewart finding love inside a futuristic dystopian society entitled The Collective, which has eradicated human emotion. As members of The Collective begin to grow suspicious of their forbidden relationship, they have to decide whether or not to risk it all in an attempt at daring escape. Directed by Drake Dormus, who directed Life crazy from a script by nathan parker who wrote moon the film also stars guy pierce jackie weaver bell pally and caitlin shield first released during the toronto international film festival equals will arrive in theaters july 15th and will be available exclusively on direct tv starting may 26th Demolition and 21 Grams actress Naomi Watts has signed on to star in the 10-episode first, first season of the psychological thriller Gypsy, Netflix announced Monday. The hour-long series from Universal Television, working title, and writer Lisa Rubin is scheduled to debut in 2017. Watson will star as Jean Holloway, a therapist who begins to develop dangerous and intimate relationships with the people in her patients' lives, press notes says. Sam Taylor Johnson is to direct the first two episodes of the series. Scrubs veteran John C. McGinley has been cast as the lead in IFC's scripted comedy horror series, Stand Against Evil. McGinley is also a producer on the New England set show, will play the disgruntled former police sheriff Stanley Miller, while actress and comedian Janet Varney has signed on to play Eve Barrett, his replacement, the cable network said in a press release. A synopsis says, when the new strong-willed sheriff Eve Barrett opens his eyes to the plague of angry demons haunting their small New Hampshire town, Stan begrudgingly joins an alliance with her to fight them off. Written and produced by Dana Gold and executive produced by Tom LaSalle, Fran Shirma, and Justin Wilkes, the eight-episode series is to premiere this fall. Principal photography is scheduled to begin in June in Atlanta. McGinley said in a statement, Dana has crafted the most deliciously combustible, subversive contrarian on television, and we're going to set it off. The Good Wife fans may indeed be seeing Josh Charles on Season 7's finale. Series creator Robert King teased the 44-year-old actor's return at the Tribeca Film Festival on Sunday. Following reports, Charles will reprise Will Gardner on the May 8th episode. King told Variety, we don't want to squash those rumors, but why would we? But there are a lot of possibilities for the last episode. Charles' character died unexpectedly in Season 5, and fans speculate Will will return as a ghost or in a flashback sequence. The actor initially attempted to leave Season 4 before being convinced to stay on into season five king told the audience i always knew someone would die during the telling of the story but when they told me josh charles didn't want to renew his contract i said fuck him he's the one the good wife will come to a final close with the season seven finale king admits he's ready to finish the series explaining alicia floric played by julianna margulies couldn't continue to experience crazy events without escaping the realm of possibilities max jerky who plays carrie agos added i do think there is benefit in knowing that this is the end and fans are going to get the closure. You don't always get that with television shows. King and his wife co-creator Michelle King downplayed rumors of a spinoff, saying there's, quote, a possibility, but it's, quote, a little bit early to be talking about it. The Good Wife airs Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on CBS. Santa Katik will depart ABC's series Castle after season 8. The never confirmed the 37-year-old actress will leave the police drama after an 8-season run as Detective Kate Beckett in a statement to news outlets Monday. ABC said Kate Beckett has been a beloved character on our hit series Castle for the past 8 years. We're grateful for Santa Katik's 
talent, and dedication to the series, and we hope to continue our relationship. Tamala Jones, who portrays Dr. Lane Parrish, will also depart the drama after season eight. The network said it's, quote, grateful Jones was part of Castle, calling the 41-year-old actress an, quote, integral part of the series. Jones tweeted in response to the news, I just want to thank you all at ABC Network, cast and crew, and cast fandom. Uh, it's been an amazing ride. Family is what we are, and I love you all. Sources told The Hollywood Reporter Caddick was unhappy on the series and had repeated conflicts with co-star Nathan Fillion, who plays Richard Castle. Neither ABC nor the actress offered an explanation for her departure. Caddick said in a statement to E! News, rather than distract from what was an amazing experience, I would just like to say that I'm very grateful to ABC for giving me the opportunity to be a part of a much-beloved show. Thank you to the fans. Castle will air its season 8 finale May 16th and has yet to be renewed for season 9. So I was told Deadline, the series may be renewed for a final abbreviated season starring Fillion. ABC's fantasy series Once Upon a Time introduced its first lesbian romance Sunday. Fans of the fairy tale drama expect sparks to fly between Mulan, played by Jamie Chung, and Aurora, played by Sarah Bolger, but it was Ruby, played by Megan Ori, and Dorothy, played by Tara Reeves, who took the plunge. The episode Ruby Slippers ends with Ruby breaking Zelina, plays uh, by Rebecca Matter's sleeping spell on Dorothy by waking her with true love's kiss. Mulan doesn't take center stage, but is on hand to encourage Ruby's feelings for her friend. Friend. Series creator Adam Horowitz and Edie Kittis said in a statement, True Love's Kiss has been a staple for this show since the beginning. This past Sunday's episode was just another example of how in a fairy tale, as in life, love is love. Horowitz and Kittis has promised to include an LGBT storyline in season five at the end of the premiere at the season's premiere in September, saying that they, quote, would love to be able to tell a story that reflects the LGBT community support of the show. Horowitz explained to want to show the, to reflect the world as it is now. It's something we think it's due and important to do on the show. This is the world we live in. Once Upon a Time airs Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. The series co-stars Jennifer Morrison as Emma Swan, Jennifer Goldwyn as Snow White, Lana Perilla as Regina Mills, and Josh Davis as Prince David. Chris Hemsworth recently had a daddy dilemma where his daughter requested a penis. The 32-year-old Australian actor was all smiles as he recalled how he handled four-year-old India's request on Monday's episode of The Ellen DeGeneres Show. Hemsworth is also dad to two-year-old twin sons, Sasha and Tristan. The star said, my daughter's kind of envious of my boys at the moment. She came to me the other day and she's like, you know, Papa, I want one of those things that Sasha and Tristan have. He recounted, she goes, I really want one. I want a penis. I was like, you know what? You can be whatever you want to be. She goes, thanks, Dad, and runs off to the playground. Uh, I'll have to pick that conversation up in a few years. Time. Hemsworth shares his children with Spanish actress Elsa Pataki, whom he married in 2010. The actor will next star in The Huntsman Winter's War and said he can't wait for India to see the Snow White and the Huntsman sequel. He explained it's a very modern take on the fairy tale world. It's not the damsel in distress being rescued by the prince. It's me being rescued most of the time by these very powerful women. He also added, I thought, wow, this is something I want my daughter to see, which is women where they're in charge of their own destiny. They're not waiting for the prince to rescue them. They can take over the world or lead armies and so on. Olivia Wilde and fiancé Jason Sudeikis are expecting their second child. The 32-year-old actress announced the news Monday on Instagram by sharing a photo with their son Otis, who celebrated his second birthday Wednesday. The vinyl star captioned a photo of herself and Otis holding their bellies, matching baby bumps. Wilde and Sudeikis started dating in 2011 and got engaged the next year. The couple have been vocal about wanting more kids, with both Wilde and Sudeikis discussing the possibility in interviews this month. The actress told People Magazine, I'm desperate for more kids. I love my siblings so much, and Jason has incredible siblings, too. The more the merrier, Otis loves little babies. Sudeikis said in response to E! News, Not everything makes me want more kids. My own kid does because I made it with Olivia, and that seems like a good cocktail. I'm all for it, but not everything no while previously told the daily show motherhood is amazing and so much fun but admits parenthood is a balancing act the actress plays Devin Finesta on HBO's series Vinyl, which completed its first season Sunday. Sudeikis, meanwhile, portrays Mike Miller on Fox's comedy The Last Man on Earth, which airs Sundays at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The actor will voice Red in the Angry Birds movie, which opens in theaters May 20th. Empire co-stars Grace Geely and Trey Byers have officially tied the nut. Not. Gilly World on Instagram Sunday confirming the news alongside a photo of the two lovebirds who were married, God is good. 
She continued, to all who have extended congrats and well wishes, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Love, Mr. and Mrs. Byers. As first reported by TMZ, the couple wed on Thursday inside a lavish mansion located on Grand Cayman Islands. Reportedly, 50 people attended the ceremony. A uh, source detailed to E! News about the wedding. It was a beautiful wedding filled with family and close friends. Some cast members from Empire were there. Grace looked stunning. Gilly and Byers met on the set of Empire.